to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Wednesday, May 26th, 2021. As a preliminary matter, this is Steve, Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. John Hurd? Yes. Len Diggins? Yes. Eric Helmuth? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes, sorry. Doug Time? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating remotely. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, which encourages and allows open meetings of state agencies and local governments to be conducted remotely in order to mitigate transmission of COVID-19 virus. The governor's order, which you can find posted with agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Further, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. I'll now turn to the first item on the agenda, which is item two for approval, Arlington Soapbox Derby local race, June 12th, 2021, uh, Joseph Barr, race director. Uh, is Mr. Barr with us? All right, he should be joining us right now. Good evening, Mr. Barr. Good evening, sorry, I was just going through the Zoom restart. Oh, no problem. Um, yeah, so we have the, the cover letter that you sent, but if you could tell us a little bit about the event before we uh, have questions and a vote. Sure, um, so um, th first of all, thank you. Uh, select board members for uh, considering our application and thank you to town staff for their help so far in uh, all the um, requests and particularly in the midst of COVID um, being flexible even prior to the recent announcement of you know relaxation of the um, the requirements uh, in helping us move forward with this. Uh, and I also apologize if you have any trouble with hearing me because my internet is telling me it's unstable. Um, as it normally does. Um, so in any case, the um, Arlington Soapbox Derby is an event that's been happening on Eastern Avenue um, between the Brackett School and Robbins Farm Park um, for over a dozen years, other than last year, canceled the race um, due to COVID. Um, I will mention that um, the town manager had actually expressed a willingness to try to work with us last year to try to host the race, but in the end, the world championships in um, Akron were canceled in any case, so we decided there really wasn't much point in us trying to run a race if the winners weren't gonna be able to move on to the world championships. But I do wanna say that I appreciate the town manager for being willing to uh, you know, entertain that conversation in the midst of a global, uh, so I just wanted to mention that. Uh, but in any case, uh, you know, the uh, Soapbox Derby has been around since the mid 1930s. Uh, it's a gravity powered racing uh, that uh, is enjoyed by kids between the age of seven and well, 21, shouldn't call them kids when they're 21, but um, you know, students in those age ranges um, who you know, race down the hill, um, you know, again, in Arlington along Eastern Avenue um, and the winner in each of the three divisions uh, gets to go to the uh, world championships in Akron, Ohio uh, in July. Uh, my son uh, was the winner of his division in 20, he is also in the chat or in the, sorry, in the uh, participant in this uh, listening in. 
Um, we have a, perhaps have a couple other board members who are who are listening in as well. Um, so it's a great fun event. Um, I think you know it's uh, very you know obviously kid focused. And uh, one of the things I'll say I love about Soapbox Derby is it's an opportunity for parents and who and to do a sport or an activity like this together um, because we you wind up spending a lot of time both building the car and racing the car. Um, it's a great STEM activity. Uh, it allows kids to build not just you know, sort of the, the STEM knowledge, but also get a hand in tuning their car as well as having the, the fun experience of racing it uh, both here and potentially um, in Akron. Um, so, you know, I won't go on too much at length. I could, I could solo and filibuster on Soapbox Derby all day long, uh, but it's a, it's a great event. Um, like I said, I think it's been uh, pretty uh, popular in the town. Um, we've met with DPW staff uh, as well as staff from the police department. Uh, and, you know, they've kind of, the plan is pretty well uh, set from previous years. And so the, they see no issues with doing it this year. Again, prior to the announcement from the governor about relaxing emergency requirements, we had also spoken directly or, or emailed directly with the health department and they had indicated where COVID protocols are in place at the time with the event happening this year, despite the fact that those emergency Restrictions are being lifted. Emergency will be, I mean, it'll still technically be in effect on the date of the race. We still do in people to, you know, physically distance as much as possible. You know, if people want to wear masks, we'll obviously encourage that as well. We'll have hand sanitizer, et cetera. Et cetera. So we do want to still retain, you know, a commitment to keeping the race as safe as possible. Um, but obviously, we don't have to strictly comply as we would have uh, prior to, to, I guess, this, this Saturday. Um, I guess the only other thing I should mention is that last night the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission listened to for the park the fact that we have people setting up um, along the edge of Rob Race uh, and they they approved that permit obviously subject to the select board acting favorably on this request as well. Um, so with that I'll, I'll quit talking and uh, happy to answer any questions or or expand on anything um, I just said uh, but obviously Again, thank you for hearing our request, and hopefully you'll act favorably on it uh, this evening. All right, I'll, we'll, I will uh, turn it over to the board now for questions and comments. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move approval. Great. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. I'll second that. I always like when this one comes before us. It's an exciting event in town. What's the age restriction? or the age range for participants? Um, so kids as young as seven can participate. Um, and technically, although we don't have anyone currently racing who's that old, it goes all the way up to 21. Um, I'll just say there's three different divisions designed for different you know, ages and abilities. So um, you know, the younger kids are in a smaller and, and simpler car, and then the older kids um, are in a the so-called master's car where they're actually almost invisible because they're the only thing that you can see is their helmet and the tiny little bit of, it's a it's a pretty broad age range that can participate and is registration still open for it yep yep we're we'll be where our inspection day uh, is uh tuesday sorry thursday june 10th um at the myrac auto dealership which has always been a strong supporter of um so Bucks derby since we started the group we can really pretty much people who are interested up until then, and we do have some cars available to rent, um, so people don't have to build a car from scratch or order a car. Uh, we can we can help them out by providing them with a car to race in. Well, I do have a seven-year-old dare, daredevil, so maybe I'll dip my toe in the water to see Bring if I can on. build a, bo a box him. myself this year. <laughs> We'd love to have him. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think you know, I think in the letter is my I believe I put my email. You, uh, if you want to reach out to me, or our, our website is ArlingtonSoapboxDerby.org. Um, but either way, you can find us, and, and we're happy happy to work with you to get a car going. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, I'll be happy to support this. What are the hours? Um, so, I, in terms of the street closure itself, it's from about 6 a.m. in the morning until 5 p.m. just to give us time to get everything set up run the race and then get everything cleaned up. The actual race itself usually starts around nine or 9.30, depending on how organized or disorganized we are in getting things 
uh, rolling. Um, I'll just mention, I, sh I should have said this earlier, that we also um, distribute no notices to all the abutters on Eastern Ave in this area and on the side streets, just so they know it's coming, because obviously we can't have any cars parked on the street that day. And generally, we've not received any issues or complaints uh, from right. those abutters. So 9.30 till when? Till usually wraps up around 3. Uh, it depends on, you know, the, the racing is sort of a little bit unpredictable. Yeah. But it's usually like I say, three or three thirty is usually when we're doing our awards, our trophy ceremony at the end. That sounds like a really cool event. I mean, I, I have this idea of a documentary slash mockumentary. The opening shot is you have a tight shot on Boston because it's a great view of Boston from Eastern Half. We you know, zoom out, see that it's Arlington, and then you dissolve to a shot of the of the the racers queued up, you know, and then into the history of that so well, you know, that's the so ACMI producer of me and me go ahead ACMI wants to stop by and we're always happy to have you know coverage yeah cool yeah. thank you thank you Mr. Uh, Mr. Helmuth uh, thank you I'm also happy to support this I have two connections to this event uh, one is that I lived in Akron Ohio for eight years so I was well aware of that uh, before moving to the Boston area a long time ago and I also lived down the street so it's at the end of my street has been and I, I will verify that uh, with Mr. Barr that the the treatment of abutters uh, traffic control has been exemplary in the 14 years I've lived um, a couple blocks from there. Um, it always just occurred to me and now I have a chance to say it you know the the uh, the cars go a lot faster if you start at the very top of the hill by the water tower <laughs> Um, th that, that's, that's a joke. Correct. That that's is, a joke. A... <laughs> no, it's it's um it's uh it's great, and I uh, look forward to that. And and uh, Mr. Hurd, if you uh, if you decide to enter, uh, I'll bring you lemonade down from the house. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. <laughs> None I... for me, though. <laughs> okay, fine, Joe. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. And I also support my colleagues. This is a great event, and uh, hopefully we get good weather. I see that you you have a rain date of Sunday. Hopefully you don't need to to do that. Um, so on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd for approval, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmut. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Byron. Good luck with the event. Thank you very much. Uh, and I appreciate the support and obviously encourage you all to come out and watch on June 12th. All right. Uh, item number three, uh, request annual Greek festival, June 11th, 2021 through June 13th, 2021. Stefano Babulus, Parish Council President, St. Athanasius the Great Church. And there's three requests here. Uh, a three-day beer and wine license, a one-way designation of Appleton Place from Mass Ave to Burton Street, and act in place street closing. Uh, is Mr. Baboulas uh, with us this evening? Yes, I just, I've just promoted him. He should be coming into the meeting. Sorry, try again, try again. Okay, uh, I'm, we're here, I'm here. Okay, good evening, Mr. Baboulas. Uh, so we have the permit application, we have the cover letter, but if you wanna tell us a little bit about the event and then I'll open it up to questions yes. from the board. So the, you know, the Greek festival has been happening down for the last, 30, 35 years. Uh, it's an annual event that we do uh, serving Greek food, uh, providing uh, music, uh, but it's basically a, a cultural event for us and for the town. Um, last year, we didn't really have the, the, you know, the opportunity to do it due to the COVID. Um, we like to start um, the event again. And um, uh, you know, we're waiting for your approvals. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so uh, I'm here with uh, Father Bob Arcon. He's in, joining us, he, oh, he's listening in, our new priest. Uh, Dino Aguimidis, our chairman of the event. His brother, Chris Aguimidis, who is the safe, safe person. Uh, Ilya Batujeas, who is the community contact person. Um, and my son, Michael who is one of the people uh, working, uh, one of the lead people in uh, the event. Great, thank you very much. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to the board for questions or comments. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Um, first of all, I'd like to move approval and thank you for bringing this forward. I know my in-laws live right in that little area and they love when this event comes to town. 
it's always fun to to go and get a get some great food, listen to some great music, and get to talk to great people. And the kids certainly appreciate everything that you do for the kids there as well. Um, we did have a note from the Board of Health that looked like their one concern was that, that the person that was generally in charge of, of the food had resigned. And I see you have Chris that Yakamides who's yes. with you. And they noted that it was their understanding that Chris would be overseeing the food preparation, the, the entire event. Is, is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. And Chris right. has, you know, from his um, credentials, you know, he's graduate of uh, Newberry College. Chris is here. He can speak for himself. How are you? Hi, good to see you. Good. Yeah, no problem. We certainly saw your credentials, and we know that you're you're very well credentialed to uh, oversee the event. I just want to make sure that you'd be there and be on yes. site, to make sure that everyone's complying. Yep. Yes, I'll be here throughout the whole event. Um, I've been involved from this as, since I was a kid. Obviously, the traditions of you you folks seeing your families and visiting, and we appreciate all that and welcome everybody there. But uh, yeah. It's um, it, it's kind of an opportunity for us to come in. Uh, Nicholas is still very much a part of the church and the parish, and uh, he's just kind of had an overwhelming year and just taking a little bit of a break. So we're we're stepping in for him, and obviously he's got big shoes to fill. Uh, but we will do the very best that we can to get it all set to go and uh, represent it like we do every year. Great, thank you, thank you, Mr. Hurd, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, mean, I, I do have a question um, for you, Mr. Chair, to um, uh, Mr. Bubulis. Uh, so how do you, how, how do you handle um, complaints from the neighbors regarding noise? So we'll have a contact question here, uh, Ilya, who will, uh, you know, the, the, the event is actually, this year is going to be um, from 11 to 9. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the, the previous year was 11 to 10. Um, I mean, we have a good working relationship, uh, a neighborly relationship with the tenants. I mean, throughout the, the neighbors, throughout the year, the people across, you know, from our parking lot, they are now we issue stickers to them. They park in our property. Um, so some of them are actually volunteer and work in our festival. Um, so the relationship is very good. Uh, we never had an issue. I, I know it's one person sometimes complains. But other than that, uh, it has been, you know, very, very uh, successful uh, relationship. And so, with the one that did, so with the one that did complain, how have you handled that one? I mean, again, we we're not doing anything out of the ordinary. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we address and spoke to him. You know, if he has any concerns, uh, we will address it. But usually, it, you know, it's not, it's not, nothing major. Yeah, I hear you. Um, well, I mean, I, look, it, it, we live in a, an area that's relatively dense, regardless of how you, um, what you want to call it, it uh, and and I, I feel that it, it, there is a certain amount of of sound audio that you have to deal with me when you're in an area, I mean, this dense, I mean, and I respect that and I appreciate that and and I and and I expect it myself, I mean, but. It, as it is for a resident who has to be prepared to accept a certain amount of sound. We, we, those of us who are producing that sound have to really be conscientious about so this, yeah. the fact that we, I'm, I'm just gonna finish what yeah. I'm gonna say. Uh, we have to be conscientious about the, how someone who is being exposed to prolonged and repetitive sound, especially over three days, is going to feel about that. Yeah. Uh, so it's easy for me to put myself in the shoes of someone who has to listen to a, a lot of sound. And so so this isn't like something that has to happen. It is something that has happened for a long time, but it's not something that has to happen. And to the extent it is one person, it may just be one person who is brave enough yeah. to speak out about it. And I'm very conscientious. And I, I take those kinds of issues to heart. Uh, so so I, I would say if someone does complain, we, you know, we, we try to really um, feel for them. You know, and, and sometimes we you know, um, just go the extra mile. You know, and and I, I tell you, I think if I were really bothered by sound for three days, uh, if I got some good Greek food, <laughs> it might go a little ways to, to making me feel a little better about it. We so do. That's, we do. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah. We've done yeah. that all the time. I mean, we you yeah. know we actually give them issue food to them, and uh, yeah. basically this year though we're not going to have a live uh, live band. 
yeah. uh, will be a DJ and uh, basically, you know, yeah, the, the, the size size of our tent, it's only half the size of what we used to do. That's uh, it. So it's a scaled down event this year because we don't know what the response that we get from, you know, from, from the people of Arlington, how, you know, how many people will come out and support us. So right. we are being, you know, cautiously optimistic. Good. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for the questions. We'll, you know, obviously, we'll address any questions we have, the, tenors, uh, the, the neighbors have. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and, um, you know, I, I'm glad that uh, we were able to to make the event happen this year. It's a, it's a positive event for the community um, and for your community. So, uh, so we certainly want to help that to be successful. Uh, and I, I have one observation uh, just about a discrepancy. I think that I had heard before that the plans were this to go to nine o'clock. Um, and you just mentioned that yourself. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just, or maybe this is a question for the town manager through the chair, um, but I noticed that the special permit actually had the hours to 10 o'clock instead. Yeah, just to, to be able to clean up at the end. I mean, the event is uh, technically is over by nine, but obviously we'll have some cleanup after that to prepare for the next day. It will be not music after nine o'clock or anything like that. So we just left it at 10 just because, you know, if we are around and we're cleaning up or the, yeah. getting ready, you know, cleaning the equipment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so, Mr. Chair, is that is that uh, the the correct way to, to note that with with uh, with the permit? Does, should the permit go to ten to allow for that, or should it go to nine to, to to make it very clear that that's when the event stops and the music stops? Well, well I, I think that the posted hours for the event are till nine o'clock on Friday and Saturday until six o'clock on Sunday. The alcohol serving time ends at nine on Friday and Saturday and, and six on Sunday. I don't know what the history is for prior years in terms of whether there's two times, one when the, the event ends for the day and, and, and the extra hour. I would well, defer to the always, town manager or town council on, on that. Yeah. It was always 10 o'clock on Saturday and Sunday, but we figured that we, you know, we're trying to scale it down this year a little bit just because, as I said, we, we really don't know. Uh, we're dealing with a new reality. So. Yeah. So I, I think we're understood, Mr. Helmuth, and, and Mr. Bullish, you can confirm this, that the event will run until nine o'clock on Friday and Saturday, but there will be time after it it, it finishes, that the music will be turned off and there'll be time for, for cleanup. Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, have, I do have a couple of questions. Uh, one is that uh, we, we have uh, ha had a couple of, of communications from the neighborhood. And I think part of this being a successful event is that it's successful for the neighborhood or two, you know, understanding that, that there is a festival across the street from them. But my question for, uh, for you, sir, is if uh, one of those concerns that we, we have heard about has been some trash that have been uh, left, you know, left over deposited from guests um, on the private property. My question is what would be the, your plan for uh, addressing that trash pickup and when that would happen each day? Well, as soon as, I mean, I we really don't, no one should be going across the street and deposit any trash but if we you know if it comes to our uh, attention that something is there we pick it up we have a cleaning group uh, cleaning constantly throughout the day uh, the the facilities the grounds uh, the neighborhood the, you know anything like that and um, the euro station that we usually is on that side of the street is here it's going to be uh, on the other side on our parking lot so we really will not be that much activity on the street side Thank you. So, so if there if there is, uh, well, will will you ask your staff to look out for trash that would be sure. across the street coming from yes. that, and then take care of it that night or yep. the next morning? Of course. So, thank you. I appreciate that commitment very much. Um, and then, um, Mr. Chair, I, I would appreciate hearing from the town manager if that is his understanding just about the permitted hours. I think that it's important since the intent, and I think that the really, I really appreciate. The organizers scaling back the hours and just going to nine. I think that's good, not only for music and things, but just try to keep keep be cautious this year, right? Yeah. But um, I, I have a question for the town manager through the chair, if I may, that if if that uh, is sufficiently documented in, in the permit, so that that would be something that the town could work with the organizers on, and being a very clear understanding about when the music stops. Mr. Chaplain. So I would think if, if the chair was willing to entertain it, perhaps adding a clarified condition that 
music uh, music will end at 9 p.m. on Friday and Saturday nights so that potentially responding officers have a clear sentence in the permit to point to. Um, That's kind of my, my thought on this, you know, if that would be. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think we had that understanding with Mr. Baboulis, and, and uh, that's that's fine, Mr. Helmuth. It, 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 I, if the rest of the board willing to go along with that, we can spell that out in the um, in the permit. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly defer to my to my colleagues, but I think you know, give, given that that's the express intent and the understanding, um, you know, I think it, it might be, it might be, be helpful in just um, helping helping the neighborhood feel. Feel uh, secure about this is too because I think we all want this to be a good positive event and we're, I'm excited about it. Okay, yeah. okay. thank you. Uh, no okay. further questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Helmut. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, th thank you, Mr. Chair. Sort of piggybacking on my colleague, Mr. Helmut's um, and others' comments. Um, what we've done traditionally in, in previous years is when we've issued the permit, we've issued it to the hours that the event is ending and we don't add an extra hour not technically literally it's private property they can stay there till midnight cleaning up if they want um they don't need permission for that as well as their security plan for um friday and saturday um has police officers there till nine o'clock and on sunday until six o'clock so that's when the event ends so i would uh implore to my colleagues that we do what we've done in past years, that we issue the permit uh, for Friday and Saturday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday from 12 to 6 p.m. Um, they don't need the permit to say an additional hour. And, and I live literally a block away and everyone who knows my family circumstances with the, uh, It's going to be an HE double hockey sticks weekend for me. So, um, but that's just because I have extreme family circumstances. So, I'm like what, to do what we've done in past practices, which is it's, they, they can stay there at 12 o'clock, they can stay there at three o'clock cleaning up. It's, it's their private property. This is a permit for um, the event, uh, for the traffic issues, closing off of streets, uh, police uh, presence. So, um, if, if I could, I, I think Mr. Hurd made the motion. I don't know if anybody seconded it, if they. No, I'm, I'm still waiting for a second. Okay, I will second it, but I will ask Mr. Hurd and my colleagues that the uh, vote is to issue the permit uh, Friday and Saturday, starting at 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., Sunday, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. in accordance with the security plan, also with the caveat that um, they can stay there as long as they want to clean up because that's their private property. And then my only other question would be, <clears throat> having lived near there, well, I live near there, not having, um, who will be the authorized manager that will be on site that if I, I have an issue, it happens to me all the time. And if I don't have to leave my driveway, I don't complain about it. But I can't tell you how many times people, I live on Howard Street, which is right by off of Quincy, right by the Audison. Um, who is the person that, maybe not so much for me, but if my neighbors have that situation, because unfortunately it does happen, that I could seek out that will be on site those three days, or is it one or two different people? So, so it will be Ilya, uh, Ilya Badiches, and also I'll be there all the time. You know, I'm the president, I'll be there every day, every minute, so they can reach out to both of us. Okay, if you could, um, uh, just forward to the select board's office, to Ashley Marr or whoever you've been in contact with, your information and, and Leah's information. Sure. Um, and that's it, thank you. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you for the, the history there. That, that's what we're looking for on, on the times. And I just have a, a couple of comments and, and I know there's been a lot of discussions this year and partly because we didn't have the event last year. You. It, it's an unknown as to how many people you're going to have this year. The, the estimate is about a third of, of what you, you had previously. And if it's nice weather, you might have a big crowd. So I think there were three things that, that have been addressed between the church and the town. One is the, the food the safety and preparation. And, and Chris is going to be the contact on that with the health department. Um, we also, Officer Rateau, I think, will be 
having additional discussions with you in terms of what the security plan is and whether a modification is needed if the, the crowds are, are larger than expected. And then the third thing, and I didn't jump in when Mr. Diggins was talking, just on the neighbor issue, I did have a conversation with a member of the parish, and, and I think you're aware of this, Mr. Babulis. Um, we're going to have a liaison prior to the event with the neighborhood, and that's going to be Mr. Feeney from the town. He's going to reach out to the neighbors. He's also going to reach out to the to the church, and I think he'll start with you. It may yeah. be another member that you've assigned to be the neighborhood liaison, but um, the communication is what's important here, and I think I think we're in a good place on on that now, and we appreciate you working with us. And to Mrs. Mahan's point, if we can get the contact numbers um, into the select board office tomorrow, that would be great because I, I, I don't mind that it's not on the application um, because that becomes a public record. But if you can um, contact the office tomorrow with those contact numbers, that would be great. And we hope you have great weather and, and that it's a successful event for everybody. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, Mr. Dickens, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, well, first, an appreciation for what you about the, the liaison and feel free to jump in any time uh, if you can save, save us time. But also, I just wanted to point out uh, a, a typo um, on the application uh, for Saturday. It has June 2nd instead of June 12th. And for Sunday, it has June 3rd instead of June 13th. Not a big deal, but I just figured I'd point that out. That was your okay. like this, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and that just pushed back a week, so I think that a week. May, uh, may happen. Okay, yeah, I, right I think here. that's yeah. it from the board. So we have a motion by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mrs. Mahan um, for approval of the three items requested. Attorney Hine. Mr. Hurd. Yep, and I'll just mention that I'll amend my motion as described by Mrs. Mahan. Sec uh, yes. As amended? Uh, Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes, as amended. Mrs. Amon. Mrs. Mahan. Um, yes, and I thank Mr. Hurd for that uh, agreement to the friendly amendment. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. Great. Thank you very much, and thank you. good luck with the event. All right. Thank you, thank you very thank you. much. We'll hope to see you over, over at the festival. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I, I'm just given the time. We. we it's 7.32 and we had put item 12 at the end of the agenda. I don't think we're gonna get to 12. I think the Mr. Amstutz may have been notified that that may be the case. So if anybody is here to, um, to, to, to see item 12, um, it looks like we're gonna, we will, I'll look for a motion to table that when we get to it. Um, I just don't want you to hang on for the rest of the meeting because I, I don't see us being able to have time to, um, to get to that. So I'm gonna to move to the consent agenda at this point. There's a number of items on it. Um, item four is the minutes of meetings, May 3rd, 2021, May 10, 2021, May 19th, 2021. Item five is a request for temporary parking restrictions at 23 Maple Street. Item six is a request for the Arlington High School ice cream fundraiser for Dana Farber Cancer Institute. Uh, for June 19th, 2021 at the Jefferson Cutter House Lawn. Item seven is a request for a contractor drain layer license for Kevin Aruda, KB Aruda Construction. Item eight is a request for a contractor drain layer license for Dennis Lahorn and CCL Enterprises. Um, this big night for contractor drain layer, license, drain layer license, licenses number nine is a request for a contract to drain layer license for Peter Sharon, New England Construction Managers, Inc. Uh, Mr. Diggins on the- Thank you, Mr. Chair, I move approval. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. I think you have a second that. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan, any questions, comments? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Very briefly, um, I, when I saw the uh, report by TVW Director Mike Rademacher, I'd like to ask if uh, the chair and the town manager could um, work towards hopefully maybe one of the June meetings. Um, I know we're uh, closing off Grove Street, but we still have our DPW vehicles, DPW employee vehicles, and DPW employees down there. If the board could get sort of a, a matrix graph of what work is going to occur, occur when. Um, and I know right now, uh, it's my 
understanding that we're shifting deep, that they're still down there. I think right now, roll call and um, socially distance, uh, get, not socially, I mean, work distance gatherings, I, I think are occurring in the paint shop. And I'd like someone to address, whether it's uh, Mr. Rademacher or the facilities director, when we do get into the hazardous material portion and there's possible exposure to that, um, what plans we have, it, I'm assuming employees shouldn't be near that for whatever limited time that happened. So if um, Ms. Corsi, uh, and thank you for giving me this leniency, perhaps in a June, one of the June meetings, we could get a report on that uh, a matrix of what work's gonna be done, where our DPW employees who remain down there kind of are gonna be shifted around, which I understand, as well as town and school employees that go to the gas pumps. But I anticipate, and I could be wrong, there might be a period of time that nobody should be down there when we're dealing with the hazardous materials. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Chapterlain, I, I just on that request, I don't know if, if we could do that in June, if you see any issues with So yeah, there, there is a very strict health and safety plan in place as developed by the architects uh, and uh, general contractor who will be managing the site along with uh, Mike Rademacher. Uh, that said, I think we can absolutely prepare a memorandum and a matrix for provision to the board at a future meeting. Sure. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hurd. No comments. Okay. And just before we take the vote, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, is anybody um, on any of the consent agenda items with us tonight? I don't know if anybody wanted to speak to any of these. I'm thinking the fundraiser, there may be someone here, but for the ice cream. Uh, Mr. Chair. I yes. I, yeah, I I, I uh, was in contact um, having placed those on the consent agenda, and actually advised them they didn't they didn't need to to be here. But um, they've been in touch with me, and um, you know have, have worked with the health department to work you know work out a, a COVID safe uh, appropriate plan. And you know I'm real excited that they're able to bring back the this uh, Scoop Mania uh, fundraiser this year to town, and I, I'm looking forward to the ice cream. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Helmet. Okay, so on a motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Helmuth for approval of the consent agenda, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Yeah, that's vote. Thank you. Uh, item 10, licenses and permits for approval, class two license, Edward uh, Gukasov, Broadway Motoring for Dudley Street Place. Um, is he here with us tonight? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, and I've just promoted him. He should be joining okay. the meeting shortly. And I'm, I'm sorry if I said the name wrong. Um, Mr. D if you can say your name for the board and, and just tell us uh, about the, uh, the the license request. Um, my name is Edward Gukasov. I'm applying for a class two use car dealer license under Broadway Motoring. I understand you were in Arlington previously and you're moving to a new address, is that is that correct? Yes, I was okay. in Arlington from 2007 till 2017. Great, okay. Um, all right, I will turn it over to the board. Mr. Helmuth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move approval. Uh, and just one question for applicant, can you just give us an idea of the kind of work that you do? I basically sell used cars. Uh, we buy through auctions. Um, lease companies and other places and resell them, service and resell them. I've been doing that for many years right now. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, we wish you Thank well. Thank you. No further. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll second that. And I, I just have one question. Um, I, I've looked through the material submitted, so I apologize if it's in there. But um, if the... Uh, requesting person, uh, how many either approximately or as close to exactly, um, how many vehicles do you anticipate being on your lot for sale at one time? Do you, do you have a max or um, that's my question? Basically this lot will allow probably storing about, uh, I think my uh, severe engineer draw a parking lot for 11 display units and five customer spots. So it would be probably about uh, 11, 12, 13, depends if some cars sold, we'll keep them on the lot until they picked up. So it could be about 15, 16 cars all the time on the lot. Okay, thank you. 
Mrs. Mahan and Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Helmuth took care of my one question. This was the first time I read an application and I was not sure what the business was, but congratulations and uh, good luck with the business. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, thank you uh, for for returning to Arlington. And, and, and um, you can give us a short answer and feel free to flatter us. Um, what made you decide to come back? Well, I was in Arlington and I knew almost everyone back then in Arlington. It was a pleasure to work there, everyone from town, neighbors. And then after 10 years, um, I had to unfortunately leave Arlington. I moved to North Chelmsford, stayed there for a few years. And last year, because of the pandemic hit our country, uh, landlord had to sell the building and I had to move out. So I started to be on the lookout and I always looked into Arlington. And luckily for me, enterprise rental car space became available <laughs> at the right time. Great. Well, once again, welcome back and thanks for coming back. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. I also echo my, my colleagues. I wish you the best of luck coming back to Arlington and uh, I, I hope you have a long time there at, the, at that site on Dudley Street. Um, so we have a, a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan for approval. Attorney Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. And that's vote. Best of luck. Great, thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Next item is item 11 for approval, closing on 1207 Mass Avenue real estate authorization um, in memorandum of understanding for public space. Um, Attorney Heim, if you could pick up where we left off uh, last week and maybe um, just, just summarize the, to the board what was before us and, and, and what's happened since. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The short version is that this is um seeking the board's uh, authorization and execution of a quick claim deed. Um, I apologize, I realize uh, this has been moved around a little bit, but basically all we need to do is execute the quick claim deed. We're not going to um, address the, um, the memorandum of understanding anymore. I think it was just uh, recycled from the last meeting as an agenda item, but uh, we've uh, responsive to the board's comments. Uh, the parties are in agreement that will pursue a uh, development of an easement that will basically fit all the conditions set forth in the special permit that I provided as reference for the board. And then I basically uh, provided you a memo walking through each one of the board's sort of questions and concerns. Uh, chief among them, the uh, buyer agrees that both the special permit fees uh, and the building permit fees to be waived will be halved consistent with uh, the expectations of the board in the discussion last time. We also confirmed um, some of the just technical pieces of the quick claim deed that the uh, initials on the deed are, uh, initials on the documents are uh, Mr. Doherty's initials, that there are no seller's costs because uh, you don't face any costs for legal counsel because you have internal counsel, you don't face any costs for stamps because uh, municipality is exempt from those um, costs and that there's no anticipated other costs because both the town and the buyer did a uh, title search and we're not anticipating any um, objections um, to the uh, to the deed. So uh, the long and short of it is unless the board wants to talk any more, I hope that my memo addressed uh, some of the concerns and, and perspectives and questions that I think the board rightly raised last time uh, and that we're Good to go just for the purposes of executing a quick claim deed and closing. Um, we will not um, uh, uh, resolve, or I shouldn't say resolve, we won't, uh, we'll bring back an easement in front of the board. That would have to go to town meeting anyway. So I'll have to wait for a, a town meeting warrant, um, but I'll obviously be working with the relevant parties to develop the language of the easement. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. Uh, okay, I'll turn it to the board, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, and thank you to Attorney Heim for the report. Um, and you know, I appreciate your work on this, and Attorney O'Connor's work on this, and I appreciate uh, Mr. Doherty being willing to come to our side of the 
of the issue as far as special permit fees and I appreciate his efforts on this. You know, I, I think from start to finish, he's, he's had a good faith as, effort in regards to this project. And just like any building project in town, I know it's not gonna be to everyone's standards, but I think it's a, re a re really exciting project for the town. It's gonna breathe new life into a block that's really been depressed for a while in particular a space that has. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to move approval on this. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. And I will second it, Ana. And since, um, since we do have just a, a wee bit of time, I, I understand, you know, I, I understand this is an agreement for the, um, the permit fees. I'm just being a little dense here. So, so, can you just explain to me why it's halved? I mean, just so that if I have to repeat to someone, I can explain it. Attorney Hein. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Diggins, when the board issued an RFP to try to basically generate interest in the 1207 parcel, which is a basically a one story building with no real parking. One of the things that we wanted was uh, to try to get an agreement to accept a mixed use deed restriction. And one of the incentives for that was the waiver of building and special permit fees. Um, when the bid came back, the only bid that came back was for a co-development of both 1207 Mass Ave and the adjoining parcel 1211 Mass Ave. The board only owns 1207 Mass Ave and it's selling 1207 Mass Ave. So, um, I think during the ARB process, a number of folks raised the sense that, well, why would we waive the building permit fees for a project that scope exceeds just 1207, which is the only parcel that the town owns. So because it's being, uh, I'm sorry, not building permit fees, special permit fees during the ARB process. So because um, it's the development of basically two you know, abutting parcels, the uh, compromise that was uh, reached at the ARB would, was that you know, you'd only waive half of the special permit fees because half of the lot is that's being half of the project that's being developed is not owned by the town and isn't being transferred by the town. Similar logic applies to the building permit fees, although it's a little bit more uh, clear in terms of the contract, the PNS. We're only conveying the premises and we're only agreeing to waive building permit fees for the premises. Uh, the project, however, spans two premises, so that's why we're waiving half. Um, any other calculations than that get kind of um, quickly complicated and crazy because, you know, you start to look at, you know, what portion of a building is in what lot when you're talking about one development uh, starts to become pretty unwieldy pretty fast. So that's, that's the rationale for it. Thanks, yeah, and it was the beginning part of it that I hadn't really absorbed that we initially, you know, uh, waive those fees in order to provide an incentive. So yeah, sometimes it takes a few times for it to get through to me. I appreciate your patience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mrs. Mahan. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Attorney Heim, for clarifying that. And um, one of the other questions I got, and I was vice chair spoke with the chairman earlier today um, regarding what the select board would do regarding the open space um, piece of this. And if the chairman would indulge me, because he's going to say it more succinctly um, and eloquently, especially since you're an attorney in municipal law, um, if you could just, um, not just for our colleagues, but um, people who have raised this question to myself and others on the board regarding the open space question, when it really comes into play for a decision and what bodies are bodies ultimately um, are sort of the decision makers um, on that. And, and we had discussed this today. And if I try to explain, it, it's gonna take eight minutes and I think the chair can probably do it in way less than that. Okay, I'll start attorney Hyman. I may turn to you on this. I don't know how eloquent I will be, but on the, the, the open space issue goes to the density bonus that's contained in the zoning bylaw. And the zoning bylaw contains language that if there's a deed, a, a grant or, or an easement, there, there can be a density bonus that is granted. That's a determination that's within the zoning bylaw. That's the reason why the, the license that was initially proposed is not before us anymore. I think it's gonna be the easement route as, as attorney Heim said, and, and an easement would require 
the approval of town meeting. So if there's anything I missed there, Attorney Hine, that you want to add, um, feel free. The only thing that I would add, Mr. Chair, is that the body that is deciding how to interpret the zoning bylaw is the ARB. Um, so they were the ones that decided that this uh, bonus and this easement was attractive and useful and should be applied to this project under the uh, criteria of environmental design review. It's not the first time that this type of thing has happened. It's not, um, we don't have a lot of large scale EDR projects like this, but uh, we've granted similar bonuses and modifications um, for basically public space improvements and offerings before as well. So um, this board isn't charged with adjudicating whether or not that's the appropriate application of the bonus or it's not, um, nor is it charged with deciding whether or not this is ultimately um, something that should have been in the special permit and how they should have approached that. So um, from that sense, um, that's already been decided by the ARB. Ultimately, any easement has to be accepted by a uh, town meeting. So that's the sum of it. Okay, th thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just wanna point out where I've gotten questions about why the select board and or when it, uh, is their point in the process to make a vote on this. It's, it's not something under our purview. It's ultimately town meeting um, on a recommendation by the Arlington Redevelopment Board. If for some reason, which we've started doing the past two or three years, sometimes select board articles, the redevelopment board weighs in, and sometimes the redevelopment board, the select board does, but that's really not under our bailiwick. Um, it, it's ARB and then ultimately town meeting. So thank you, uh, uh, Attorney Hyman, Attorney DeCourcy, Mr. Chairman, for um, explaining that. All done. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And I would just briefly, if I could, I see Attorney O'Connor is is with us tonight and I, I want to thank her but also um we had the meeting last week and, and I'm, I'm pleased that everything was was taken care of in the in the in the intervening week um and I just want to if she could join us for a second just to confirm and uh also um just let us know her estimate as to to when we think we will be closing on this once once we uh, issue the final approval um attorney o'connor if you're with us Yes, good evening to all of you. Um, I confirm what Attorney Heim has told you, work these issues out. I just wanna point out that the issue with respect to giving the town a license versus an easement was a collaborative thing. It was not my client's um, uh, decision to do that. We thought that was the better route to go, but um, he doesn't care if it's an easement. I do think that the uh, ARB, the planning office will be the, the group that's charged with administering that space time-wise, use-wise, and things like that. The MOU does say what it, it cannot be used for. And you know, one of the factors was they didn't want this to be uh, something every day so that the neighbors weren't bothered by something happening there every day. It can be open public space, but something organized, I think it's twice a week the MOU calls for. But it's my understanding that planning will administer this. Okay, thank and I you. I want to thank Attorney Heim for all of his help with this as well. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, Attorney O'Connor, and I appreciate you coming back tonight. I didn't have any other questions. I want to thank Attorney Heim for addressing the issue on the allocation of the uh, the, the building permit fees because I, I think that question came up to a to a number of us. And and aside from the difficulties of trying to parse out what's on either lot, I, I will also point out that the 1211 Mass Ave lot, there's a lot more open, called unimproved. The unimproved portion of 1211 is greater than what the unimproved portion of 1207 is. And that's a further difficulty in terms of parsing out what a building permit allocation would be. So this is a convention that, that was used. It's consistent with what was done with the special permit fees. And I think given the, comp the complexities and the fact that you don't have the same building on each parcel, you don't have the same lot coverage, it was a, um, a, a, a point of negotiation or discussion. And, and I think we're, we're, we're comfortable with that. So thank you. And, and before we get to the vote, I will say we're gonna to close tonight. We started tonight with Mr. Barr, whose son had won a soapbox derby. I believe Mr. Darty's son won the soapbox derby in Arlington in 2009. 
So there's a little closure on the issue this evening. So we have a, Mr. a Mr. motion. Chair. Mr. Chair? Yes. I, I, I did have a question. I'm, I'm not sure I, I was, uh, was called on. Yeah, go right ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Helmuth. You were not called on. And uh, <laughs> I did that again. I'm, I'm sorry about that. My, in my <laughs> no, case. No, so, no, um, yeah, no, Mr. Helmuth. Yeah, thanks to my colleagues for clarifying all, 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 all my questions except one. I just wanted to double check um, that because town meeting has to approve the easement, does that mean that the, the owner would not be able to exercise the density bonus until, uh, until in such time that an easement would be, uh, would be approved? You know, is that the effect, the effect of that? I think the, 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 the most reasonable way to interpret Mr. Helmuth is that the uh, easement is a condition it's one of the special permit conditions. It's not gonna, uh, it's not relative, relevant necessarily to construction, but it's okay. something that has to be done, you know, in order to basically operate. So, you know, I think, I think everybody's got an interest in uh, having this uh, easement be addressed at whatever next town meeting we have. Uh, but that, that, that's, I think the, the, the most concise way I can answer with given the time that we have. Okay. Yeah, thank you. No, that, that, I appreciate the clarification and no further questions, Mr. Chair. All right. And, and I'm sorry about that, Mr. Helmuth. I, I started talking and I lost track. Um, I was thinking of soapbox derby. So, um, One topic. yeah, exactly. So, on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins for approval on the deed, uh, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you all. Thank you very much. You. Okay, so item 12, if, if we could take a, a, um, a motion to table that um, in, so until moved. our next meeting. Thank you. So Do I have a second? Second. Second. Great. Thank you. So motion's been made and seconded to the table. Uh, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmut? Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Okay, next item is correspondence received. Lowell, Lowell Street parking concerns. Move receipt. A second. Second. Great. Any questions, comments uh, from the other members? Okay. Mr. Chaplain, should we refer this to the parking advisory committee? So I, I took a quick look and I, I think maybe as an initial step, we could ask Officer Rateau to take a look at the history and potentially answer the question of the resident. And then if, if it goes deeper than what he can find, then we can go to the Parking Advisory Committee. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. Uh, so on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mrs. Uh, Mr. Diggins um, to receive the, uh, the, the, the uh, Lowell Street parking concerns letter. Attorney. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you, Attorney Heim. And last item eight, new business. Attorney Heim. Very briefly, um, I'll be issuing the board some guidance based on uh, whether or not the governor's bill allows us to extend remote meetings until September 1st. Um, I know that a lot of folks have been asking about it. It's the only reason I raised it. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Hyam. Uh, Mr. Chapdelaine. Uh, given the time, no new business tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. Mr. Helmut. No new business. Thank you. Mr. Diggins. None for me. Mr. Hurd. Nope. Mrs. Mahan. My new business can wait, and if uh, it's appropriate, after you, if you have any new business, I'd like to make a motion. Okay, I have no new business, and I, I will turn to you for the motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to suspend our meeting and re-adjourn concurrent with the regular um, town meeting that the select board will remain in session and will adjourn concurrent with the regular town meeting. Thank Second. You. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. So we have a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Hein. Mr. Heard? What amazing timing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Uh, bless you, Mr. DeCourcy. You, you're on in 47 seconds. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Yeah, I right. Thank right. you very much, everyone. Be soon. Not see you all in a few seconds. <laughs>